to everybody and this uh, we have discussed kinship yesterday then i also started with regard to economy we very clearly said that economy is uh, in the most simplest sense it's production distribution and consumption how are we producing our goods now before i uh, like though yesterday i also introduced you all to the characteristics of uh, tribal economy one point i just wanted to add here that uh, we have to whenever we are uh, discussing about economy we have to look at from multiple perspectives like how was the economy prior to industrial revolution and how uh, economy evolved after industrial revolution and just one slide i want to introduce and tell you all i'm sure you all are aware it's nothing new i'm going to tell you but sometimes you know uh, repeating certain things uh, be, uh, becomes mandatory when you talk about entire evolution of human society because as a student of sociology this is what i always believe in that these revolutions have brought in marvelous changes tremendous changes in the way we live in the way we uh, have our economic activities our political activities and in this connection agricultural revolution industrial revolution and it revolution they have become extremely important uh, yes pratyusha very good morning to you also child so when you talk about agricultural revolution agricultural revolution was the phase where plow was invented nagali a nagali invention to mana mottamu vyavasayam chese paddhati lo maarpu vachindi prior to agricultural revolution people were not very good in their agricultural endeavors but plow invention of plow became very very important and this invention of plow also led to the first permanent human settlement called as village now you may be wondering vinita why are you talking all these things in anthropology class we have to understand this basics of uh, the evolution of human society if you have to understand tribal economy right so uh, when i'm talking about agricultural revolution plow village and industrial revolution we all know that you know the the invention of steam became very very important with supported industrial revolution and industrial revolution led to formation of cities so you can also ask me vinita does it mean that before industrial revolution there were no cities there were cities there were pre industrial cities after industrial revolution when our economic system underwent lot of change we shifted to modern cities and it revolution you all know my dear friends we have entered into post modern cities now why why we have to talk about all these things in an anthropology class my dear friends i want you all to understand one thing good morning sujatha good morning child the i want you all to understand one thing usually the popular perception about anthropology is what that it talks only about primitive things only about tribal society why we should study this paper of anthropology i have always told many many students they do not like reading this paper i have seen in my personal experience i want to tell two things here and then i will continue my economy class in fact this thing i should have told you in my day one class but you know sometimes uh, as teachers when you start talking certain things just miss out in your thought process in india tribal population comprises of 8.2% of total population according to 2011 census after 2011 now 10 years have passed away now 21 census should begin probably we are waiting for this covid to come under complete control so you may ask that so what 8.2% is not a very big number but if you convert 8.2% of 130 or 140 crore people the numbers will be huge so if you if you are interested to make india 
a developed country from a developing country we are still carrying the burden of being a developing country we have still not achieved that status of being called as a developed country right so you cannot ignore your tribal community at all this is point number 1 that is why it's not that anthropology no edo manam eppudo chadutunnamo enduku charra ledhi manake em sambandham ala anukokoddu ippudu manam sociology vidyarthuluga manam development gurinchi maatladtam even development experts they cannot ignore tribal community because it comprises of 8.2 crores this in percentage it may look very small but when you convert 8.2 crores of 140 crores people 140 crores the 8.2 percent we calculate cheyandi number is huge the second reason why we have to uh, focus on tribal studies anthropological studies primitive societies functioning because whatever is today we are in the evolved state of human existence that has come from that time today's existence is is just not new suddenly it has not come it has evolved evolution prakriya dwara aa kalam nunchi manam present time ku vachamu aithe aa kalam ne samajam e rakamga undi adi manamu mana roots ki marchipolem kada the society which is forgetting its roots will not continue in future my dear friends and point number 3 why we have to focus on anthropology is anthropology will also talk will decide the future course of human society now when i am talking about it revolution it is just not post modern cities now uh, it revolution once it reaches in few countries it has already reached its peak this will be followed by genetic revolution now this has already started i am not saying that it has not started now you may wonder that vinita what is this genetic revolution genetic revolution i don't know how many of you uh, have kept a track of this the other day in news just day before yesterday i'm not talking about a very long time day before yesterday it was told now uh, all over the world china is being projected as a country uh, which you know which creates viruses and which uh, spreads viruses right or wrong that is debatable but the experiences so far are very clear that it is doing that and when in india like uh, most of you who have children or in recent past la- last 5 10 years uh, when when women are pregnant they have to undergo certain tests uh, to determine whether the fetus uh, is good or not is there any genetic problem with the fetus or uh, is it any, is any abnormality there with the fetus or not for that there is a kind of a blood test now china has been uh, taking away all these blood samples and it is trying to do some kind of a genetic experiment probably trying to create some other new kind of a biological warfare situation so when i'm talking about anthropology now you may really wonder that something is wrong with vinita that on a sunday morning i'm talking about genetic revolution in anthropology class my dear friends anthropology is not only about the past primitive societies but it will also decide the future course of action in terms of genetic revolution uh all those who were there in the first class you must be remembering that i was talking about physical anthropology as one of the branches of uh, anthropology in physical anthropology your entire study is about genes what is the genetic makeup how the genetic makeup has it undergone any modifications so all these aspects are directly connected with anthropology and i don't want you all to carry the impression and perception that you are reading about something which is outdated no you are reading something which is very very contemporary so friends on that note let me continue our uh, characteristics of primitive economy so this slide i have already discussed in yesterday's class there is no technology money as a medium of exchange is not very widely used but we are seeing that 
even tribal societies, tribal economies, they are getting in uh, to a lot of exposure with modern economies also. And because of that, also a lot of changes have come. Here, one more word I want you all to know. Uh, are you aware of this SEZs? Yes or no? Please respond, friends. Do you know what are SEZs? I'm waiting. There is one response. Let me check what is that. No, ma'am. Okay, I will. I will tell you. This is very, very important, friends. And this is this. Anyways, I will talk more in detail when I'm talking about tribal development. Now, SCZs are called as special economic zones. Special economic zones. Why we have to talk when I'm talking about tribal society is these are those areas which are allocated by government of India to do and promote all kinds of economic activities and exporting activities. And they are some areas ki, some zones ki, Prabhutva mo, Kendra Prabhutva mo, SCZs ka nominate chestundi, akkada massive industrial activities out there, economic activities out there, akkada exports ki, encourage jayadaan ki prayatnam chestaru, ibanni, Economic development point of view is very important. I think that the question is that the SEZs in anthropology class. Most of the SEZs they have been allocated in tribal zones. So when, I, when we are talking about this point, see, second point, money as medium, I'm sorry, money as medium of exchange is not widely used. This is the typical characteristic of uh, tribal economy. But if you see, so because even in tribal areas, SEZs are being given by the government, the tribal communities are getting exposed to industrial economy, industrial ways of living things. So in now, money as an exchange uh, is has started being used. This is the typical original characteristic, but erotulo, money is predominantly used as a medium of exchange. Then uh, I, I have already discussed these points. Just to quickly revise, banking system originally was not there. There were by and large barter kind of a system where there is exchange of goods and services and not much concept of money is there and profit motive is zero. And we have to remember for any economic activity, we require incentives. If you have a business, you have to do it. 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 Earning profits in a business or in an economic enterprise is important because that is what gives us incentive. So, in tribal society, when profit is not there, on what basis is the economic relations existing? Here, this is what is the beauty of primitive economy. Here, the biggest incentive is to ensure social solidarity. So friends, this is what we did till yesterday. I hope the points which I discussed in this slide about agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, IT revolution, genetic revolution, SEZs, these points are clear. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask or you can also uh, post your questions in the chat box. So should I proceed then? We will continue with the characteristics of primitive one. So division of labor is very, very simple. Now the big question arises here, what do you mean by division of labor? Division of labor is nothing but how the work is divided in the society. Who will do what kind of activities? Now see, for example, in today's time, if you have uh, any problem with your eyes, will you go to a physician or will you go to eye specialist? Ever they are welcome? Eye specialist. Oh, very good. Because we are living in times of specialization. Division of labor. Now work is divided. Who will look after eyes? Who will look after ears? Who will look after throat? 
ENT we have, eye specialist we have. If you have some problem with your heart, nowadays we no more go to physician, we go to cardiologist. So the work is divided. Now this is exclusive reference to medical field. Now you see any field of our social living, the work has been divided. Division of labor means on what grounds, on what basis the work in the society, the labor in the society is divided. Today, for example, you have exclusive doctors for different parts of your body. You have different kinds of, uh, different models of laptop depending upon your requirement. You have different kinds of law and order uh, police forces, right? If there is communal rights, you have rapid action force. If there is any terrorist uh, activity at the state level, first comes octopus, then comes SPG, which is at national level. So in every field, we are seeing uh, immense division of labor. Division of labor, whenever it is there, my dear friends, it leads to specialization. Samajam lo, division of labor, chala tivranga unte, dan mulaka, specialization, gura ekko unte. Kani, primitive societies lo, division of labor is very simple. Why we are saying it is simple? Because it is based on what work males will do, what work females will do. So the division of labor is purely based on gender, but in modern societies, it is not like that. I'm sure you all must have studied about Emile Durkheim also in your first year, second year classes. Emile Durkheim also talks about mechanical solidarity and organic solidarity when he's talking about division of labor. So in mechanical solidarity is similar to our Primitive society solidarity. Now we are seeing in primitive economy, there is immense impact of industrialization. Now, Northeast zone, by and large, Northeast zone, if we see, majority population belongs to scheduled tribe. Okay, uh, they most of them belong to different tribal communities. So if you see in Northeast, Northeast is also known for all our tea gardens. Am I right, friends? Assam. Assam is uh, Assam tea is world famous. And in Assam, in Manipur, we have many tribes like Khasis, Nagas, who, who are also living in the northeastern parts. So there are more and more tea gardens, uh, corporates are operating. Now, when you talk about places like Jharkhand, Okay, Jharkhand is also predominated by tribal community. You talk about Chhattisgarh, you talk about Jharkhand, where they are very, very rich in their uh, coal mining system. So there also industries are coming up. Please remember, wherever uh, you know uh, natural resources are rich, their industries will come by default. And the places where, which are very, very rich in natural resources, we will also find the presence of primitive communities there because the places which are rich in natural resources, they are usually remote areas, remote forests, remote mountainous zones, and there we find primitive community. So we are seeing that there is a lot of impact of primitive community. Uh, we are seeing that influence of industrialization is tremendous on them and this also has influenced their economic system. When you talk about property, in modern societies we have this tendency of you know accumulating the property. Uh, in primitive societies, when you're talking about property, it is basically to display the wealth. So, for example, land, personal effects, and certain intangible rights are owned as property. For primitive society, property need not mean jewelry. Property need not mean land all the times. Property may include those rights also. I, I, because my father was a tribal chief, I will be the tribal chief. That right is also considered as property. And you see, as you are seeing the example, Nagas, 
for nagas importance of giving peace is very very important so the concept of rich and poor is also decided by uh, you know uh, who, who becomes the chief and prestige the person who is enjoying more prestige more social honor is considered to have more of property and at the same time as i have been telling you from yesterday's class this concept of property also has undergone lot of change because of the development of technology and also because of development of more and more transport communication which has led to greater exposure of tribal societies with non tribal societies in today's time when you talk about who is rich people having swiss bank and accounts are also considered as very very rich am i right friends this is what is also something very interesting to me moving ahead cooperative and collective endeavor the uh, cooperative and collective endeavor means the primitive economy is based on the principles of cooperation regular market as an institution is absent this is what i told you earlier also in yesterday's class also when we say that regular market is absent what actually it means ante the e point ki manam e rakamga ardham chesukovali market enduku important market cheppadam to na tatparyam prati sari physical market kaakapochu market always does not imply the presence of a physical market it may also imply the presence of a uh, you know profit motive and everything being guided by market requirements and market demand i want to give you one example here it, it may not be directly connected two examples i will give you i'm sure you all uh, have heard about Ashwarya Rai, Sushmita Sen, and Dia Mirza. Have you heard about these three ladies? Let us let us interact for two minutes, not more, because I have to complete this topic today. Have you heard about these three ladies, friends? Yes, yes, ma'am. I'm sure all the girls would have definitely heard. Uh, I don't know about our uh, male. Uh, students in the class no male yes, response okay good <laughs> thank you thank you so why i am talking about them and from this example i want to tell you all that how markets are decided how markets are uh, dominated the and what was a coincidence is in the same year sushmita sen she wins the miss universe pageant uh our uh, ashwarya rai wins miss world pageant beauty pageant and dia mirza wins miss earth pageant in one year itself suddenly world realized that indian women are beautiful and in one year itself all the three international beauty pageants they were won by indian women now do you think this is a coincidence it is not a coincidence and the moment these three women were elected at an international level within a month's time you will see almost all of india even small small towns they were flooded with beauty parlors and with the products made by the international brands beauty products made by the international brand today everyone is talking about aloe vera right everyone is talking about aloe vera is aloe vera new to us no but we never gave any importance jungle laga aloe vera chetlu unde adi kani mana eppudu dan gurinchi pattinchukoledu ippudu international pageants gelchin tarvata anni beauty indian market was flooded with beauty products and today if you are see that is why you know sociology is a beautiful subject because even through advertisements you will come to know that what is the pulse of the people in the society now you see most of the products they want uh, they want to show you uh, how to become fair some people said that no this is wrong and that is why instead of uh, fair and lovely we have glow and lovely now we don't have fair and lovely right so why i am taking this example because modern society is 
the big big multinational companies they dictate the market india is a huge market for any kind of consumer products because first thing is we are english educated population second thing is there is very very massive population which has media exposure and third thing is we we we, we as a country we as a population we believe in experimenting with things that is why pepsi or coke or uh, any uh, toothbrush brand or any electronic brand india is a huge market but this kind of a thing we don't find in primitive societies so regular concept of market is absent we will see weekly seasonal and festival markets are there for example in rajasthan when there is pushkar mela right so many primitive communities in and around rajasthan uh, they they come there and conditions of market like competition and monopoly is not present monopoly means presence of one company see initially when mobile started coming uh, into the market nokia had a monopoly almost everyone had a nokia phone today nokia phone is not so dominant we have multiple brands today so in modern economy the concept of cut throat competition now you see uh big basket have you all heard about big basket friends yes yes yes, yes. yes. now you see along with big big basket had a monopoly for a long time but then reliance has come with jio mart so the monopoly of big basket is broken now there is cut throat competition uh, so these kind of features we do not find in primitive economy because in primitive economy despite all kinds of exposure with non tribal economy even today primitive economy by and large is agrarian in nature and because of some exposure many people from primitive communities they are working as industrial workers in the industries which are established in and around tribal areas so now all kinds of occupations we find like the primitives which are in a very very uh, uh, what should i say basic level of economy they are still focusing on collection of forest products and in that honey is a very very important uh, product uh, which is the foundation of the primitive economy so hunting honey gathering lumbering shifting cultivation i want to spend some time to talk about shifting cultivation along with domestication of animals especially in himalayan zone we will see that sheep is domesticated very different uh, breeds and species of sheep is domesticated and they use that sheep uh, hair as a wool and uh, pashmina shawls is also made out of that so many primitives are also involved in that kind of a, a profession what is this shifting cultivation see i will take you back to this slide now plow was there plow was invented nagali invention to agriculture revolution there fantastic very good but initially man did not you know see if any land any soil has certain stipulated period of fertility it's not that any soil is fertile throughout especially after 4 5 years of constant cultivation the fertility of the soil may be impacted primitive man did not know how to enhance the uh, fertility of the soil so what he would do he he would cultivate a particular piece of land for some time for probably 5 years 10 years 4 years 5 years once the community realized that the fertility is being lost then he would shift to some other place and what he would do he would again burn the forests and bushes there and the ashes what what is what is generated because of burning of the bushes and forests those ashes added to the fertility so he would uh, do cultivation there after 5 10 years again he would move on to some other place 
This was shifting cultivation. Shifting cultivation lo, Adi Manavu, Adi Samajam Lona Vallo, Okate Chota undi Vyavasan Chase Vallu Kadu, Vallu Shifte Var, Oka Place Nanti Vere Place. Along with all these things, there are also subsidiary occupations. See, yesterday's class I was talking about Todas. Todas basically are pastoral tribes. Pastoral tribes and TNT. Pashupal and Adwara, Walu Walla economy, uh, look after Chester. Apart from pastoralism, they are also very good weavers. Now you see our own bones. I don't know how many of you are familiar, but bones, uh, they make fantastic, uh, what should I say, uh, fantastic things from uh, a very uh, beautiful technology of mixing mud and mixing the metal. They make a fantastic kinds of uh, items with that. If possible, I will show you today or in next class, I will try to even when I had gone to Bones Village for uh, taking my students for field work, I had purchased a few items there. So that kind of handicrafts, basket making, people who are staying in Hyderabad and if you go to Chadargat region, in Chadargat region, you will find uh, this very, very uh, inexpensive uh, sweaters, okay, mostly people who come from Tibet region, again, primitive uh, communities. So basket making, hunting, all kinds of handicrafts, okay, in this, in this also, many primitive communities are involved. Friends, any questions, any doubts uh, do you have? Any questions, any doubts so far? Or is it clear? Yes, friends, should I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I got only one yes response. Yes, ma'am, good to go. Yes, ma'am, yes. Go. Oh, okay. Now, food gathering. What is this food gathering? Here, again, as I told you, today, now see, we, we, all, we all have heard a proverb, history repeats itself. Today, there is a growing demand for organic products, growing demand for those products which, which, which are grown with indigenous technology. You may wonder that why am I talking about this at this point of time. Now, uh, again, see food gathering is also very prominent uh, form of tribal economy, which especially these tribes, Kharia, Birho, Chenchu, Kadar, Palya, these tribes, they are more involved into uh, this kind of economy of gathering food. And they collect all kinds of edible products, medicinal herbs. Now see, uh, in next month, we will have Ganesh festival. During Ganesh festival, you must have seen, if you are uh, living in Hyderabad, you must have seen that people come and they sell different kinds of uh, uh, leaves, flowers, which is specially offered to Ganesh Ji, or even during Shivratri. And most of these fruits, most of those leaves or flowers, they also have a lot of medicinal importance. So tribal economy, today under the impact of industrialization, though is losing this, this particular form of food gathering, uh, again, some kind of impetus is being given to them because there is a growing demand of medicinal herbs, medicinal fruits, medicinal flowers, medicinal seeds. And in few corners of the city, you will see some primitives coming and they are selling those products. Kadars as a community also are doing shifting cultivation. For example, honey, honey is a very important ingredient of uh, Indian food and especially in almost all cultures, in all communities, we will see that even small kids are made to drink honey. Okay, so and thanks, I wouldn't say that maybe thanks is a wrong word. Uh, because of this pandemic, we all have realized how important it is to consume honey in our day-to-day -day food habits. And big, big companies were advertising. Now, now we have realized that, okay, having honey will enhance our immunity. 
okay and instead of sugar it is better to use honey or jaggery in our food so when i'm talking about honey the basic the basic honey collection is by tribal community itself now food gathering or hunting fishing or uh, forest products collection these are all still in a primitive state today in today's uh, tribal india 2021 july tribal uh, areas by and large they are based on agriculture ippudu varaku ivan nen cheppan chudante ee points gurinchi hunting uh, gathering lekapothe forest product collection avanni typical characteristics ఇలాంటివి ఈ రోజులో చాలా తక్కువ పర్సంటేజ్ ట్రైబల్ కమ్యూనిటీ ఇవన్నిట్లో ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఉన్నారు మేజర్ చంక్ ఆఫ్ ప్రిమిటివ్ సొసైటీ ప్రిమిటివ్ కమ్యూనిటీ ఇస్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఇన్ అగ్రికల్చర్ బికాస్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఆల్సో ద రిజల్ట్ ఆఫ్ గ్రోయింగ్ ఎక్స్పాన్షన్ ఆఫ్ మోడర్న్ సిటీస్ మోడర్న్ సిటీస్ ఆర్ ఎక్స్పాండింగ్ దే నీడ్ మోర్ అండ్ మోర్ ఏరియాస్ మోర్ అండ్ మోర్ ప్లేస్ ఇస్ రిక్వైర్డ్ ఫర్ దెమ్ so agriculture is a most predominant occupation of the primitive india in today's time this was not the original feature but in today's time and what are the uh, which are the primitive communities involved in agriculture we have oraon mutta bheel bone santal ho and if you can recall my dear friends all these communities they are part of the central zone you remember i was talking about geographical distribution of tribes right in that uh, we were talking about northeastern zone southern zone and central zone so, so most of the tribal communities living in central zone their main occupation their main source of economic sustenance is agriculture yes now shifting axe cultivation uh same plots of land were not cultivated this is what i was trying to tell you and the cultivators they kept on moving from one place to another place now shifting cultivation though is a, a, a though was a predominant form of tribal economy it is not very good from environment point of view see when you are uh, constantly cutting down the trees and shrubs now see please try to i will slightly try to enlarge this picture now these are mountainous zones friends in mountainous zones or in hilly areas if you are cutting down uh, if you are if you if you are cutting down uh, there one second bhagwan ji log ke paas ek ghoda rakha hai dekh wo le kya please i want to show them uh, yes i'm sorry i so on these mountainous zones when you cut down these trees uh, for the purpose of cultivation these trees actually hold the soil together okay but when you are cutting down the trees what happens the first layer soil uh, uh, which is very very fertile and very good for uh, growing all kinds of vegetation and if you are cutting down trees because the roots of the trees they hold the soil okay when you cut down the trees for the purpose of uh, your cultivation and when there are rains or uh, okay the fertile soil is completely lost okay i'm just uh, trying to show you this i don't know whether you all can see are you able to see this so this is what is made by gones and this is not made up of metal my dear friends this is also a reflection of gones god are you able to see this yes ma'am yeah so this is you know this is not made up with metal purely it is basically made up with mud a special kind of mud and some elements of metal if this falls down it may break also but when you are seeing this it looks like as if it is made up of metal this is also the this i had picked up from when i had gone to indarveli for my field work purpose and this is also a reflection of gones god gond community diniki devul laga pray kuda chestunnaru aithe chudandi primitive community lo kuda enta brahmandamaina technology undi this is not prepared in any factory or industry there you know there are villages 
which all they come together and they prepare things like this. Uh, have you all heard about uh, Channa Reddy Institute, Human Resource Development Institute, which also trains IAS officers? I think by name chess circle, sir. Ilanti, idi yoke chala chinnna chinnna size kada. If you ever in a resource person, so this time manam momento this time chodante. At the Channa Reddy Institute, by name chess circle, the village walla to okalanti contract chessi. A village lo momento thayar chetis. So in this way, what what is going to happen? Uh, there, there is also there will also be encouragement for production of these kind of things, and th this will also help our tribal art and crafts to grow and to expand. You all must be aware uh, that uh, our Prime Minister Modi, as part of uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat, Self Reliant India, he is giving lot of encouragement to toys making. Have you all heard about it, friends? Have you all heard about it? Yes, Toys making and even uh, making products from jute in order to avoid all kinds of plastics. So many primitive communities, which are basically involved in making toys from wood, they they are going to get tremendous boost. And uh, uh, I remember in Hyderabad also, it was chala takku dagu kundi. Then no college vele ages, no man, almost fifteen twenty years back, I would see during Dashera time, so many people selling wooden toys on, ah, ila bandi mida amme var. It was the kanpada manu. But Kondapalli toys, they are so popular, and in many such toys making primitive communities play a very very important role. मन पिल की कंप्यूटर गेम इष्ट लापटाप गेम आड़कोर स्टूडेंट इन द्लास अवर चाइलूड प्लेंग we should definitely buy such things and uh, feel proud of our primitive communities primitive only time paranga vaal primitive unnaru vaal daggara unna indigenous technology ee rojullo kuda ledhi i will give you one more example and then i will proceed i think i already discussed this tsunami when tsunami came my dear friends people thought that uh, uh, if you remember when i was talking about geographical distribution of tribes the andamanese tribe i i gave you the break up no the different sub tribes in andamanese like o o omges jarvas all mixed together they are not more than 1000 and this is as per 2011 census now presently what is the number we do not know so that those tribes are on the verge of extinction and when tsunami came you know the most parts of Uh, our Asian countries, including our uh, Chennai, our Tamil Nadu, Andaman Nicobar Islands, they were all under serious trouble, and people thought that these tribes were also washed away. After few days, when media tried to locate that, you know, where are they? Are they still surviving or not? We found them, and it was a huge surprise to the entire world that. how how they could survive tsunami because the most advanced countries like thailand and even countries like sri lanka uh, even our own country we had uh, we had huge losses because of tsunami so they were asked that how could you protect yourself so what they said that they the from their earlier generations onwards they have been taught how to assess the environment how because the birds birds they they have greater level of sensitivity auditory sensitivity when compared to humans so they are able to assess the pressure of the air how air is moving what is the wind of movement and on the basis of that when they communicate with each other all these things they they were taught by their elders and on the basis of the change in the environment they were they guessed that there will be some major 
uh, environmental problem and in order to protect themselves they all went to a very hilly region in, in their respective uh, territory where they were living and because they went on a huge height the uh, even tsunami waves which were uh, as high as 60 feet also they couldn't harm them why i am giving you this example is to tell you all one thing that we are when we use the word primitive it is not primitive in their knowledge not primitive in their technology primitive because they are there from a long time manam vaadiki primitive endu cheptunnam vaallu aadi kaalam nunchi unnaru kabatti primitive antunnam kaani vaallu nijanga primitive kaadu vaalla vaallatho velli meer oka 2 3 days time spend chesthe manaku telustundi vaalla use chestunna technology vaalla economy simple untundi kaani vaalla vision ప్రకృతి కాపాడడం కోసము వాళ్ళు ఎంత తాపత్ర పడతారు తెలుసా అలాంటి విజన్ ఈ రోజుల్లో మోడర్న్ సొసైటీకి చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఉంది క్లైమేట్ చేంజ్ తో మనము మన పృథ్వీకి మన ప్లానెట్ కి కాపాడుకోవాలంటే అలాంటి విజన్ క్లైమేట్ చేంజ్ సమస్యలకి అడ్రస్ చేయడానికి మన ట్రైబల్స్ ఎంత జాగ్రత్తగా వాళ్ళ పర్యావరణానికి కాపాడుకుంటారు అలాంటి యాటిట్యూడ్ మోడర్న్ సొసైటీకి చాలా అవసరం ఉంది రోజుల్లో సో షిఫ్టింగ్ కల్టివేషన్ వాజ్ హార్మింగ్ సో దే హ్యావ్ రియలైజ్ అండ్ దే హ్యావ్ మూవ్ డౌన్ టు అనదర్ ఫార్మ్స్ ఆఫ్ కల్టివేషన్ సో దే యూస్ టు యూ నో ఫాల్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ద ట్రీస్ అండ్ బిఫోర్ ద సోయింగ్ సీజన్ దే వుడ్ సెట్ దెమ్ ఆన్ ఫైర్ ఐ యాజ్ ఐ టోల్డ్ యూ దోస్ యాషెస్ వుడ్ క్రియేట్ సమ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఆపర్చునిటీ సో ఇఫ్ ఆల్ ట్రీస్ వేర్ కట్ దెన్ Bhuya called it, the Bhuya is also a community, it is, they called it Dahi, only bushes, bushes are just small, small trees, bushes and shrubs were burnt, then it was called as Koman. If all the trees are cut, Dahi, only bushes and shrubs are called, then they called it Koman. Nagas call it as June cultivation, Maria of Bastar, Bastar uh, in Bihar, they call it as Penta, Kodu community call it as Kodu. Baiga community, Baiga tribes call them as favored. So this indicates that shifting cultivation was there in almost all the primitive communities. Now see, this is some example of handicrafts, which includes your basket making, spinning, weaving, and Maria Gond distills spirits from the forest produce. and cone bones they do metal working this is the same example which i was trying to talk to all of you metal working weaving cane and pottery pottery is a fantastic uh, art and uh, many many communities who are involved in making beautiful pottery then korva and nagaria tribes they are also iron smelters so in this also my dear friends part of iron is smelted in a wood so even that technology was there among primitive communities from a long time bamboo mats and baskets ipudu manamu chatai antam chudandi ipudu anta plastic chatai ostundi chapa chapa i think na what you call chapa mat what you call it telugu chapa ma'am chapa chapa okay <laughs> so ipudu earlier we used to have mats made up with those bamboo sticks in the they are so beautiful in it now it is everything is made with plastic and fiber but those beautiful designs in that chapa and you know there was something called as dolchi dolchi ipudu anta sky bags briefcase air bags avanni unnai chudandi dolchi was a kind of a, uh, it was a kind of a thing where you could store things and you can go on travel now it is people are traveling by air but you know when i was a, a child and my my maternal grandmother's place was in remote area in uttar pradesh and in those time it used to take 3 to 4 days to travel by train అప్పుడు ఫ్లైట్స్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఎంత పెద్దగా లేదు కదా మిడిల్ క్లాస్ వాళ్ళు ఆ రోజుల్లో ఫ్లైట్స్ యూస్ చేసే వాళ్ళు కాదు నౌ ఇట్ ఈస్ ది ఎయిర్ ఫేర్స్ అండ్ ఆల్ డిస్కౌంట్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ సో ఈవెన్ అప్పర్ మిడిల్ క్లాస్ అండ్ మిడిల్ క్లాస్ ఆల్సో ఏబుల్ టు అఫోర్డ్ ఎయిర్ ఫేర్ బట్ వెన్ ఐ వాస్ స్మాల్ 
my father used to take us to my maternal grandmother's place which is there on indo nepal border it used to take 3 to 4 days and most of the things which we used to carry to put our luggage it was made up with all kinds of handicrafts and one that was called as dolchi dolchi oka square laga untundi daniki oka handle untundi meer edaina danni pettukochu chala brahmandanga undadi ee rojullo avanni mana kanpadadu we we have become so called modern and you will see that cane uh, chairs were used to be there fantastic cane chairs so our tribal communities are very creative in that regard you see what they are wearing here head gear the lambada jewelry i don't know how many of you have literally seen what all they wear it is so fantastic so creative i tell you my dear friends and uh, Uh, of course they, they may not be as uh, what can i say as important as gold jewelry but the beauty what is there in their jewelry it is awesome and as i told you sodas gopias and bees these are pastoral uh, tribal communities their most of the their tribal economy is based on pastoralism and a significant chunk of tribal population today apart from agriculture is also involved in industrial labor especially those areas where factories and industries have come up their corporates like you know when tatas initially started their uh, adventure uh, they, they they selected jamshedpur jamshedpur was very uh, well known for its natural resources of iron and steel ores were there so many tribal communities they also involved themselves into industrial labor work so friends these are different forms of tribal economy what i have discussed and in this unit two questions which can be very very important one is characteristics of tribal economy and second is forms of tribal economy So, if you have any questions, any doubts, you can ask me, friends. Uh, the other, I don't know when is our next class. I have not been informed by our uh, Ambedkar people so far. But uh, out of fifteen units today, we have completed ten units. Okay. So, if you have any questions, any doubts, you can ask me. We have still five minutes time left. So, if you have any concerns, you can ask. or if everything is clear then we will stop it for now uh, but before i stop let me give you a brief introduction of the next unit so that uh, next time when we are meeting i can immediately start the class the next unit is about tribal polity what is the political system among tribal communities now if you see uh, the other days uh, cabinet expansion did you all see cabinet expansion you must have seen that major chunk of tribal communities they have been given representation now why i am like you can definitely ask is this the way to introduce tribal polity why i am sharing this as an example because the political system in tribal communities is undergoing lot of change under the impact of modernization and under the impact of democratic forms of government we will see that tribal political system has undergone lot of changes now tribal political system is just not confined to what tribal chief talks about okay tribal chief sons will be next tribal chief that is there very very limited tribes even today most of the tribal uh, villages they are part of panchayat raj system there is something called as pisa i will just put in your uh, chat so that you understand what am i talking kedarnath movie kedarnath movie in which context you told child आफरीन केदारनाथ मूवी के बारे में आप बोले ना 
किस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में बोले मैं वो चैट में नहीं देख पाई दिस इज पीसा पीसा इज प्रोविजन ऑफ एक्स पंचायत एक्सटेंशन टू शेड्यूल्ड एरियाज to carry things in yes yes you can say that yes afrin thank you yes basket that's true so uh, pisa so when i'm talking about tribal political system my dear friends the original characteristics of tribal polity they also have undergone lot of change and today what we see is strengthening of democratic decentralization even in primitive areas tribal governance today is predominated by fantastic thing called as democratic decentralization so on that note i will end today's class my dear friends if you have any questions any doubts you can ask or we say goodbye excuse me ma'am yes ma thank you ma'am ma'am Ma'am, you said now at last you will give important questions. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. what I told you in tribal economy. The today is not my last class. You don't be. We have, we have we still complete five units in this particular unit. Tribal economy. You can definitely expect two questions. One is characteristics of tribal economy. So when you get a question, I will take you to that slide. When you get a question on characteristics of tribal economy, you can. elaborate on all these points this slide that this slide division of labor impact of industrialization and these three slides they are talking about characteristics of primitive economy and another okay. question which you can expect is forms of tribal economy okay so in forms of tribal economy these are the slides which you can talk about so all kinds of occupation for subsistence means for survival it includes hunting honey gathering lumbering shifting cultivation lumbering is what taking out the uh, you know chal of those trees with medicinal properties then lot of subsidiary occupations are also there so if you are getting a question on forms of tribal economy these points you can mention that okay ma'am okay Anything else, friends? For now, ma'am, uh, for the same semester, uh, we are having another elective subject called rural and urban sociology. Yes, yes. Uh, I guess for the the next session would be for this. I guess. See, I have no idea. I just want to tell you all one thing, friends. Uh, see, basically, uh, I am. Um, we are not aware uh, about other things. In fact, I am only informed. I just get a call from. Dr. Ramna or Dr. Srinivas, who are from sociology department, they will only inform me at what time is the class, and they share the link with me. Honestly speaking, I'm not aware of all these things. So what I would suggest you is, I'm sure you must be having uh, the study center contact number or uh, uh, the uh, open school contact number. Please call up and get the details. yesterday i was also seeing ambedkar open university website because i wanted to know like what are the other uh, even i do not know when is my next class they said that there will be initially they told me eight classes then they told me 12 classes so even i am not completely aware of that and i'm really sorry i'm not in a position to help you on that but uh, you can if you have contact number you can call up and find out Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank. Excuse, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Ma'am, actually, we are having the fifth sem from the next month to third onwards, ma'am. What What you have from third? Ah, uh, the fifth sem exams. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, actually, this is a part rural and urban sociology. If the university will send the uh, a uh, timetable of uh, online classes ma'am suppose hmm. so we can listen the classes and we can perform better in the exams yes 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 so how can we proceed uh, to the university sir ma'am to complete this portion by the last week or uh, second week uh, of this month this paper i will definitely complete I, i in fact i have not been given any further dates but uh, bindu has made one whatsapp group and 
uh, i request all of you to share your bimbo if you can share your contact number in the chat box the those who are not there in the whatsapp group they will send you the number so that you can add them and uh, in that group uh, i will also keep updating you you can use that link on which link okay ma'am Okay, uh, so you can use that WhatsApp. In fact, I had requested uh, Dr. Ramna and Dr. Srinivas about this, but probably okay, they have their own compulsions. Okay, friends. So, uh, okay, Bindu, please share your yeah. See in the chat box there is uh, Bindu's number. All of you, please send your name and your contact number to Bindu. She has created one WhatsApp group, and then she will add you all so that we can be in contact with each other. till the time of your examination with regard to this paper okay but i am not even aware what is the syllabus of your rural and urban i have no idea about that uh, parveen parveen unko aap personal whatsapp karo beta phone mein mat karo uh, please unke personal phone pe whatsapp karo okay friends can we please get the okay got the link thank you okay, okay from bindu http yes yeah. Yes, so you can all join that WhatsApp group, and uh, we will be in touch. At least with regard to my paper, please don't worry. Whatever doubts, anything else you have, you can also clarify. Okay, friends. So we call it a day then. Okay. Uh, whenever is my next class, I shall definitely update you all on that in that WhatsApp group. As soon as I get the information from Dr. Ramna, I will update you all on that. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Have a great day. Great Sunday. Enjoy. Enjoy.